All right, so speaking of, so we have all these variants, right? But how do we actually find out what these variants are? And um, there's kind of two technologies that you'll hear referred to. One is called genotyping with a gene chip, and the other is sequencing. So genotyping basically allows, it's super cheap. That's why people love it. It costs like $100 to genotype somebody. And it will basically probe anywhere from like 500,000 to a million positions in the genome where we know variation exists. So it can look for SNPs or like indels. And it can only look for ones that we know exists. But we can then measure all of them for 100 bucks. Whereas sequencing, it costs like $1,000 to, uh, to sequence somebody fully. And when you sequence somebody, you find out everything. you like, I'm just going to read your whole genome off. It's not quite that easy, but essentially, you're saying, I want to figure out all the variations, rare variations, common variations, things nobody's ever seen before. Um, sequencing tries to show you all of that, and so it can find things that aren't known about, whereas genotyping cannot. So then us computer science people came up with this idea called imputation, which is kind of a bridge between these. So basically it says, let's do this cheap genotyping, and then we're going to kind of fill in the blanks. And for any variant that we know about, we can usually fill in the blanks pretty well, so we don't actually have to measure it on the genotyping chip, but we can still know what it is. And so it kind of moves you as if it was sequencing, but you still don't get things that have never been seen before. Um, so if Ben Ruby says genotyping or sequencing, it just means they read, the, they read these people's genomes somehow, and that's how they got their data. The problem with both genotyping and sequencing is this issue of phase. And so if this is my true genome, right? So I know which variation is on this haplotype and what variation is on that haplotype, right? However, the machine doesn't tell me that. The machine just says, at this first position, you're CC. And at the second position, you have a T and an A. Or like, here, you have a G and a C, or a T and a T. Then that, but it doesn't tell me which chromosome it's on, or which haplotype it's on. And um, that's what we really want to know, is uh, <clears throat> what the phase is. So here, in our standard notation, if you ever see a genotype that has like this dashed line in it, it means you don't know what the phase is. Whereas if it's this pipeline, it means, oh, we know what the phase is. So everything on the left side of this pipeline is on one of my chromosomes, and everything on the right side is on the other chromosome. So one of the questions we can ask is, how do we actually figure out what the phase is? And if we go old school, we would also genotype or sequence my parents. And of course, we don't actually know what their truth is. So what we get is something like this. And now I'm only showing the positions of where I have variation. So we look at that, and we're like, OK, so here's my dad's genotype that the machine points out. Here's what it points out for my mom. And then here's me. So I can look and be like, OK, so I'm a TA, like TA. And I can go, all right, well, my dad's got a T and an A, but my mom only has Ts. So clearly this A had to come from my dad. So I'll put my dad on the left side of this pipe. And there's my mom over there. So then I look and I'm like, OK, GC. My dad's GG, so clearly I got a G from him. Oh, and from my mom, I got the C. So then we can put the C over there. And we can just kind of like work down until we now know the correct phase for my, uh, for my genome, all right? What's the problem with doing it this way? <clears throat> How many, yes? Mutations. You have mutations, yes. Mutations will not show up correctly. That's one problem with this way. But from a more practical standpoint, it's expensive, right? So before, I just had to measure myself, but now I have to measure two other people to figure out my phase. And we really don't like things that are expensive. And so we came up with these things called computers, and we have great statistical algorithms. And uh, we can actually do a lot of this phasing now without having any access to family data. There's clever ways to do that. We'll talk about this in another module as well. But the point is, we can now go from one of those sequencing machines to having a decent readout of what my DNA actually looks like and what different variants are on which chromosomes. And, um, and that's the end of module one. So you now know how we have, 
how we read out our DNA and also what the variation looks like on it.